The Capitals are looking for help with scoring. When will the Caps see Ryan Leonard? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one-on-one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the status of Martin Faravari. We know that he got injured in the game against the Canadians. When will we expect to see him back? A little bit later, we will talk about the status of Evgeny Kuznetsov. We know he entered into the player's assistance program. What is the latest with Kuzi? But just to get it going here, we will talk about when will the Capitals see Ryan Leonard? One of the things that's been true about this team all season is their inability to score consistently five on five. They have some untapped talent in my estimation uh, in Ryan Leonard, who was playing uh, for Boston College this year and is knocking it out of the park. When will the Capitals see him? Is it possible that we could see him next season or is it going to be further down the road than that? One of the things that I know for sure is oftentimes it's good not to rush these things. Uh, I do another podcast for the Nationals, and I was talking about Dylan Cruz today, and everyone wants to see Dylan Cruz as well. But what is one of the things that we know about Dylan Cruz is that he killed it uh, playing in single-A ball, but when they knocked, you know, notched him up a couple of spots, he didn't get that same production. So how I'm going to tie this together with Ryan Leonard is the fact that he is killing it in college doesn't necessarily mean he would kill it in the National Hockey League. He might, but not necessarily the case. He might need some time to marinate and work on his game a little bit. And that's okay. I don't think that we need to rush Ryan Leonard. I know that we want to get better right now, and I want the Capitals to get better right now, but sometimes it's better to just kind of take it easy. The Capitals want to get younger and faster. We know that. It's a fast league. The teams that do it the best now have a lot of young players and they are quick. I noticed that with the Montreal Canadiens as well. They're good skaters, they're good puck handlers, uh, and sometimes they just they worked around the Capitals. It's the way the league is going, getting younger and faster. The Capitals have some truly untapped NHL talent coming soon, but when... Ryan Leonard was selected eighth overall in last year's draft. Some people said Benson, some said Mishkov, but Leonard, it was the best choice for the Capitals. And if you are an everyday of the show, you know that I spoke about the different options that the Capitals had at the draft or potential options that they had. And some people, I thought that Benson would have been the best match for the Capitals at that time. And then it appeared that the Capitals were laser focused on Medfei Mishkov as well. As it turns out, that was not the case. And the Capitals selected Ryan Leonard. Now that I've had time to look at it, now that I've had time to see his game, that was the right decision. He seems to me to be a prototypical Capitals player. And what does that mean? Well, he is similar to just 
the Capitals brand of hockey. He just is kind of that rugged, uh, good goal scorer, great skater. I think that he has a lot of different things that the Capitals team needs, not to mention he has a bit of a snarl to his game. He's a tall man and he's built very big, almost kind of has the feeling of a Tom Wilson. A strong forward with a great shot, a great skater, and a pest with some snarl in his game is what I said. He's sturdy and not easily driven off the puck. He's responsible with and without the puck. Now, when you just hear that description of a player, you're like, yes, more. I, I want that on this team right now. And I get that. But let's remember, that is the production that he's getting at Boston College. We also saw what he did at the junior championship as well. So in a larger sample size, it does appear that he is a really great hockey player. And I'm not here to diminish or say that he's not going to live up to what the Capitals are looking for. But let's just take our time. At the end of the day, he says, and I'll talk a little later here, hockey will be waiting uh, for him. The NHL will be waiting for him. So similar to Tom Wilson, maybe better in my estimation. I think that once he comes into his own and he is actually NHL ready and has put some uh, miles on the odometer in the National Hockey League, he could very well surpass uh, what Tom Wilson is. He scored seven goals in his last four outings and has totaled 21 goals and 20 assists for 41 points in 29 games. He was also clutch in helping Team USA to a gold medal. Those are all really great things that look really great on his resume. And those things will still be there when he joins the Capitals, whenever that might be. Again, it's good to tamper expectations and pump the brakes a little bit when we're talking about this young talent. You know, sometimes they can catapult right to the top. You take a look like uh, at someone like Connor Bedard. You take a look at someone like Connor McDavid, uh, Austin Matthews, some of those guys that they are just jet setting to the top with a fast trajectory. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it takes some time. Listen, when you're playing in the National Hockey League, that is the best of the best. And, you know, like I was talking about off the top, Dylan Cruz knocked it out of the park in single A ball. But when he got bumped up a couple notches, not so good. So it is quite a big step from playing in college to the National Hockey League. Uh, again, we want to see. We want to be patient. We want him to take the time that it takes to be where he needs to be to be NHL ready. But when he is ready, Look out, because I think the Capitals have an absolutely dynamic player that is going to change the look of this franchise in years to come. Once Alex Ovechkin hangs up the skates, those are going to be the big faces of this team going forward. Uh, and I ex I'm very excited to see what he has uh, on the big stage and, and to see these, these huge pieces. I'm talking about Crystal. I'm talking about Ryan Leonard. Uh, I'm talking about those kind of players that are in the wings uh, that are going to make this team one to be reckoned with. And we're starting to see some of those players slowly, you know, work their way on onto the big team uh, as this team has got has in quite some time with the additions of Malenstein and Connor McMichael. Uh, we've seen Hendrix Lapierre, um, that those type of players that there has been great reluctance all year to, to have these young players on the team, but it is trending in that direction where we are starting to add more and more of those players to the big team. So exciting. Uh, I'm excited to see Ryan Leonard, of course, but I think that at the end of the day, we have to be just a little bit patient uh, when it comes to that. So when will we see this untapped NHL talent on tap next year? Whoa, easy Capitals fans. Let's take it easy there. He said of his future, obviously, it's always in the back of your head when you're going to turn pro. And then when you're going to take that next step, that's kind of the last of my worries, Leonard said. The NHL is always going to be there, but I think just college is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so you never want to rush out of there. And that's true. He's only going to be young for so long. He's only going to be in college for so long, and he's going to have a life after hockey. Now, if he's lucky, he's going to set himself up for success where he'll probably never have to work again after hockey. But in the event that he doesn't, he could always fall back on college, whatever his major is, you know, that kind of thing. 
but also just he can work on his game uh, as well when he is playing uh, down in Boston College. So, you know, again, that is my big thing is that we want him on this team tomorrow. I'd like to see him in the lineup Tuesday night, but that is just not the right idea. But I understand where Capitals fans' heads are coming from. Uh, my thought is that we should take time and let him work on his game. Once he signs his entry-level contract, his college days are done like he said, the NHL will still be there. And that is some sage advice uh, from a young talent. That's what I'm telling you, that these young these young players are far more mature uh, than they were years ago. But uh, for, for one, uh, make no mistake about it, I am very excited to see Leonard on the big stage, but just when he's ready. All right, so coming up here after the break, I will talk about the status of Evgeny Kuznetsov. We have not heard a whole lot from him since he entered into that program. What's the latest? I'll discuss coming up. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Let me tell you something, guys. When you're watching your favorite NBA team, you're not that into it. Maybe the team that you follow isn't playing that great. Open up the FanDuel app, a little bit of money on the game. All of a sudden, the game is that much more exciting. Just visit FanDuel.com, locked on, and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Locked on has launched the first ever seven streaming channel on YouTube and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24/7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Evgeny Kuznetsov entered into the Players Assistance Program, a program that was set up for players that are dealing with substance abuse, abuse players that are dealing with some sort of mental issue to be there for them when they need it. We know that we've seen Line involved in that program here recently. And Kuznetsov, this is his second time uh, involved in this program and what is the latest uh, from Evgeny Kuznetsov as there has not been a whole lot said about him since he entered into the program. Kuzi entered the NHL Players Assistance Program for the second time February 5th for an undisclosed reason. There's been little said about Kuzi since entering the program, but his friend and fellow countryman Alex Ovechkin has been in touch. And according to Igor Rabinier via Sports Express, we text Ovechkin said as translated via Google Translate, everything will be okay. And that's what we hope for. I know that uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov has not necessarily had the season that he was looking for. And uh, I, I don't know what he's going through right now. I, uh, you know, And I, it's not fair to speculate, but whatever he is going through, I want him to be better. Not just for the Capitals, but for him, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, the man, the father, the husband. The guy whose life is outside the National Hockey League. Um, and we're hoping uh, that he can join the team whenever he's ready. Ovi said there was no indication that Kuzi was struggling and needed help. No, we didn't talk about the topic, Ovechkin said. Let God grant that everything goes well for him. Kuzi is my friend. We are family friends. You never want something to happen to your friend that would require this. But good that a program like this exists, uh, that he doesn't have to struggle in silence with whatever he's struggling with. And, uh, you know, I, again, I don't want to make this about his NHL playing. Uh, I want him to to be right with whatever is ailing him. And the rest will fall into place because if he is struggling personally, uh, that could also be why his game is struggling on the ice as well. When he's engaged, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov is one of the better players out there. It's getting that consistent production from him. And uh, so if he can get his head right, if he can, you know, make right what is wrong in his personal life, I think 
the rest of things will fall into place, whether it be on the capitals or elsewhere. Uh, I, you can't deny that when he's tuned in and playing great hockey, that he is one of the best. Kuzi will have to be cleared before he can return by a program administrator. His salary will also not count against the cap. That's a good thing as well, as we know that's the same thing that's uh, about Nick Backstrom as well. So, you know, uh, making a good thing out of a bad situation for both Backstrom and Kuznetsov is that their salary is not counting against the Capitals. It gives them a little bit of flexibility, especially since the trade deadline is coming up here on March 8th. Um, so Obi said he had no idea uh, when he would be able to turn or return. Rather, there is not a lot of background of what we know. Carberry said on February 6th, there's not a lot of background information that we have shared with us other than just the fact that he's in the program. So for us as an organization, staff players, it's just supporting him and his family as he gets the help that he needs. And here, here, that's what we want at the end of the day. Uh, obviously, I would like to see a great uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov back out on the ice, helping this team make a push. Uh, but in his absence, you know, if I'm going to make a good thing out of a bad thing, and it's not really a bad thing, I mean, it's bad that he's not here, uh, is that this has presented a really great opportunity for Scarbosa that uh, would not have been the case. I don't think that we would have seen Scarbosa on this team unless it was at the end of the season, say, you know, that the Capitals were sellers and they were just swirling around the drain. So this is a, a really great opportunity to see Scarbosa. And guess what? He is a really, really great player. And it's as no surprise, uh, he was near the top in the AHL in assists, and he is bringing a lot of that same skill set to the Capitals to help them in their games. And Spencer Carberry has spoke glowingly of him, talking about what a great job. So, you know, uh, oftentimes you see this in all of sports where someone is injured or they have to miss time for this or that, that another guy gets his opportunity. And guess what? Scarbosa is pretty good. I think that he fits into uh, the future of the team. And I know that he's not the youngest guy uh, playing in the AHL, now the NHL, as he played uh, quite a considerable amount of time on different teams in the AHL and the NHL. Uh, if you don't know that, that Scarbosa also has NHL experience. So he's not just the kind of guy that, uh, you know, has just lingered in the AHL for years. I mean, he has put the years in in the AHL, but he does have the experience. And experience means a lot. Make no mistake about it. Uh, that uh, it, it can sometimes translate, and he's a good playmaker. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing I notice is that he is another guy that puts himself in a position to succeed. And uh, it, it's no uh, accident that he was the one that got the call up over, say, someone like Hendrix LaPierre. But as far as Scarbosa goes, keep doing what you're doing. I love what you're doing. And I think that it offers the capital some flexibility, especially since we're coming up on the trade deadline that, hey, this Scarbosa guy is pretty good. Uh, we have an opportunity for him. Uh, as far as Evgeny Kuznetsov is concerned, look at, you know, he is in the player's assistance program. We don't know how long he's going to be in there, but if we're taking a look at his season, if we're taking a look at his career with the Capitals, I'm talking about him as a player now, not the man. I think that there will probably be, you know, more uh, phone calls being made in the off season to try to move him on to another team. Uh, he has not caught uh, attraction with the Capitals in quite some time. His high water mark was around the Stanley Cup around that era, uh, and that's when he played his best hockey. Since then, it's been a bumpy ride up and down. Uh, but if he can get his head right and he can get his game together, I think that he does have a future in the NHL. And at the end of the day, despite what kind of play that he's had on the Capitals, I'm pulling for Kuzi at the end of the day, and I wish him nothing but the best. All right, so coming up here after the break, we will talk about the very latest with Martin Faravari. When can we expect to see him and what players will slot in, in his absence? I'll discuss coming up. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. And let me tell you something, guys. One thing that's frustrating to me is that when my favorite band comes to town, or my favorite comedian, or my favorite sports team, and I can't find tickets 
Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download GameTime today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals are going to be without the services of Martin Faravari for quite some time. How long? Initially, it was thought that it was going to be day to day, but now it was said that it is going to be week to week. Not an ideal situation for a Capitals team that is trying to make a push for a wild card spot, a playoff spot, and they are going to have to do it ostensibly without one of their key defensemen in Martin Faravari. The Capitals are six points out of a playoff spot, and they need all hands on deck with 29 games left. Martin Faravari is not day-to-day, but week-to-week -week after his injury versus the Habs with a lower body injury. We remember what happened. He kind of blew a tire behind the net and fell awkwardly. Uh, he had to be assisted off the ice with, by Jason Service, and uh, it was all kinds of awkward to see. And it was not you know, necessarily because of uh, another player from the Habs. It's just that he kind of, like I said, blew a tire, lost an edge, as they say, and he fell. Whether it's one or two, that's what we're looking at, Carberry said via Monumental. Faravari blew a tire behind the net and fell awkwardly. Faravari does, as we know, plays a huge role with the Caps and is revered as part of the present and the future of the Capitals' blue line. We know that. Uh, Rasmus Sandin also figures to be in that mix, and it initially was thought that uh, Ethan Bear will, would be that piece for the future as well, but that's a bit in question as he has been a healthy scratch you know, for a good chunk of his time here with the Capitals. Very surprising, I guess I got to say. Um, that, you know, this was the big piece that Brian McClellan went out. There were other teams that were vying for Ethan Bear's services. And where has Ethan Bear been? Well, up in the press box, watching the game with some popcorn and some fancy clothes from on top. And uh, that's not what, what we had hoped for for Ethan Bear. I want to see more. And there's nothing glaring in his game that pops out to me. Uh, I would love to talk to the coaching staff. I would love to talk and say, what's going on there? I would like to, love to talk to Mitch Love and say, what's what's going on? Spencer Carberry, what about his game is so deficient that he is getting pulled out of the lineup? Um I guess for me, what, what I hear, what I read uh, is consistency. But when I watch the game, you know, unless I'm, you know, freezing it and watching him skate around the ice in particular, there's nothing that really jumps like he blew it. Like there's been times this last this season here that I've seen Jensen blow it. I've seen TVR be up just real apparent out of position. You know, it led to a goal, but there has not been a, a whole lot of opportunities. Well, he hasn't played a whole lot, to be honest with you, on the Caps, where I'm like, he blew that. That that was totally on Ethan Bear. So uh, I don't know why he is not in Spencer Carberry's good graces or Mitch Love. I, I guess I don't know, but this could potentially be a good opportunity uh, with Martin Faravari out, you know, for some considerable time to get a good look. Again, like I talked about in the second segment, another guy's loss could potentially be another man's game. As we know about Martin Faravari, he plays on the first pairing uh, most of the time with John Carlson. He leads the Blue Liners with 114 hits this season and also has 74 blocks. He has a physicality to his game. And he's not afraid of mixing it up. I like Martin Faravari's game. Uh, so when he is going to be out of the lineup, he is going to have, you know, leave some big uh, shoes to fill. Uh, this is going to be a good opportunity for an Alexiev. This is going to be a good opportunity for an Ethan Bear. And, you know, I, I'm really kind of rooting for Alexiev again. He was penciled in for being on the Capitals on the blue line until Joel Edmondson was uh, picked up from the Habs. And then it, it got all kinds of complicated. You know, you take a look at Alexiev, he puts the work in. I'm really hoping that this is going to open doors for Alexiev. This is a great opportunity for Alexiev to try and establish himself on the blue line, considering some players might be on the move 
with a trade deadline on March 8th. What am I talking about there? Well, there's been names out there. I've heard rumblings about TVR. I've heard rumblings about Jensen. So, I mean, if you want to go down a conspiratorial rabbit hole, maybe they're trying to showcase those guys a little bit more. And, you know, they're just kind of shielding Ethan Bear because they want him for the long term. And, we, you know, there's no feeling that we want to move Ethan Bear. So I guess there's a lot of different ways to look at it. And, you know, again, you can go down conspiratorial rabbit holes about why players are in and out, and you can never get a real honest answer from the coaches. Sometimes they'll tell you something that isn't true at all. They're just saying it, you know, to hide uh, the true narrative. But in any event, Martin Ferravari being week to week is not optimal for the Capitals. This is crunch time. This team needs to be firing on all cylinders. That's the forwards, the defense men and the netminders everyone needs to be in lockstep listen the capitals do play on tuesday evening let's hope they can pick up another two big points lord knows they need it listen i want to thank you for joining me on this edition of locked on capitals your only daily year-round podcast covering the washington capitals and i want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and are watching this on youtube you are what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel app. Find Locked On Sports now available on the free Fire TV channels app. It's quite something. Check it out. It's 24 hours of sports. It's going to be Capitals and, and Nationals and, and whatever team that you want out there. And it's 24 hours a day. So go out there and check it out. I think you will love it. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.